For 99% of you that watch my controller reviews, the methods I showed you in my overclocking guide, as well as this video, for measuring input lag or delay by checking and adjusting your polling rate are going to be the quickest methods to check if an overclock has taken effect or check your stock clock speeds without the need to disassemble a controller or buy additional equipment. But if you want to get down to the millisecond, the information at the end of my input delay video still stands true, where I showed footage from Anna Punch using a single board computer, an Arduino to be specific, to connect to the PCB of a controller. Controller. Then use Gamepad LA software to measure not just the clock speed for a general idea of the input lag or delay, but the actual controller latency through things like button presses and thumbstick input. So while yes, whether you're talking about mice or controllers, this little cheat sheet or chart is still very beneficial for knowing at what clock speeds you should be getting around what input lag or delay. Even further than that, programs like X Input Test can give you such accurate readings just by plugging in your controller. You can even see things like micro stutters of inconsistency, and at the end of your test, or pull as I like to call them, you get some very useful statistics, especially when you run multiple tests back to back than average them out or cross check it with other programs like Gamepad LA. Fact of the matter is, if you're one of those one percenters, makes you sound like a motorcycle gang or something, that does care about not just the input lag or delay, but also controller latency through things like button presses to the PCB, your best method for getting that information, well, actually your only method is partially tearing down the controller than using a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino which are a little bit smaller and cheaper to measure at the board. The reason I personally prefer the three software programs versus tearing down a controller is one, I mentioned 99% of the people that watch my videos don't know, care, or wouldn't notice a few milliseconds of latency, especially because a large portion of them are using these controllers wirelessly on console, where overclocking isn't even a topic at hand. Secondly, with the amount of controllers I review, it would take additional time to record and edit that segment, and it's not laziness that's keeping me from doing it, but oftentimes these controllers are new to the market market, highly requested for a review, and I want to get my initial impressions out so people should know if they're worth their salt and plastic. The third and final reason, like I mentioned in my input lag or delay video, which will be linked in the description below, is after seeing the results from those latency testing boards, the majority of the time the results are extremely close or identical to that of using software like X input test. But if you are interested in the controller latency of some popular wired pads on the market, I will have some awesome resources linked in the description below, some charts and bags. Grams. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes your money and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.